Oh my god. Hey best pally, I'm Allie, your friendly neighborhood cyborg. If you didn't see my video about this last week, Levels basically shows me my blood sugar in real time, which is super helpful for staying healthy, burning fat, performing better, keeping away diseases. So go check that out to see how it's the future of health and fitness. But then immediately come back here because what I discover in this video is incredible. Hi, welcome back. Now that I know that keeping my blood sugar as level as possible will basically make me superhuman, and the foods that keep you level are completely different for everyone, and I have an immediate feedback loop to truly see which foods do that superhuman thing for me, check out the next unbelievable passage in my CGM journey. This part is gonna be super cool because I'm making a personalized glycemic index. What is that? I'm gonna find out what type of carbs my body likes better. Is it fruit? Is it wheat? Is it sweet potatoes? Maybe I'm sensitive to a ton of stuff, except I should only be eating pasta. Which I'm hoping is the case, and that's why I'm testing pasta first. Adding a picture to my levels log. Now this is an exact weighed out amount because I'm trying to control for everything. Mm. I'm currently fasted, and I'm going to be for each of these tests, sitting at 85. I'm not gonna eat or work out for three hours after this so I can get a good graph of what happens when I eat, and then it peaks and then comes back down how quickly, how high, and then do the same thing with a bunch of other stuff so when the graphs are layered on top of each other, I can see what sucked, what was okay, what I'm really good at eating. Because the goal is to keep those peaks down and keep your energy pretty level the whole day. Gotta love a fitness challenge where you just eat. Success. And I do wanna mention to anybody that's doing this, if you're more sensitive to one thing or another, it doesn't mean that you're more healthy, it's just that you're different. But in general, I'm absolutely stoked to be doing my own carb calibration because I'm gonna use the exact words that Levels told me. Ongoing efforts to establish a universally ideal diet may be based on a false premise. Also known as the bodybuilder on Instagram. You should eat bananas, like lots of them. I trying to tell you to eat like him and he might be dumb for doing that. Oh. My. God. This is crazy. I. What? Take a look at what my glucose was doing. Come here, focus, show them. Look at these results. I've never once gotten a 10. This graph is so low and level, it's like, it's like I was fasting and obviously not stressed out because I had pasta in my belly. Just to do a comparison, what I ate last night got a score of six and that's what they look like together. I'm floored by these results and it's only the first one. Although it might be that I'm super sensitive to oat bran. I have that every night too with my pasta. So maybe one of them's making me go Ugh! and the other one's like, fine. I am so anxious to do more of these tests. Test two, I had to wait a whole day to be under the same conditions. I've been eating oat bran pretty much every day for like four years. Let's find out how my body actually deals with it. If this seems like a lot more than the pasta, it's because we're doing this based on net carbs, so you subtract the amount of fiber from the amount of carbs in it, which I thought was just some garbage that Quest came up with to sell more bars. Or I guess the fiber affects how you digest the carbs, and so you need to take that out to make sure that they really are equal. Mm. Oh my god. Remember when I said that I've never gotten a 10 score? I've also never gotten a zero score until today! Look at this. I turned pre-diabetic eating oat bran. What? That's absolutely insane. I've never seen a peak that high and I've eaten like huge volumes all at once, but it was never just oat bran without any fat or protein before it. I can't believe I'm like allergic basically. Okay, just like highly sensitive to this thing that I've been eating, I'm not kidding, every day for four or five years. For all those times where I was like, I should have oat bran because it's a low glycemic response food and it has a lot of fiber in it and that's way better than pasta. I should have just been eating pasta. Pasta is delicious and my blood sugar thinks so too. I'm seriously mind blown. Before I had this, I had a score of almost an A, like 89% for the day. And after I am at a solid F minus. So all those people, no, some of the people that are having oatmeal in the morning thinking they're being healthy, they're not. But some people might have the pasta response that I did to oatmeal. I feel like I'm a textbook case. I just blew my own mind and it's so well illustrated. This is crazy. And I can't wait to see about fructose. Also, I'm stoked that I got an excuse to do this on camera. I'm stronger than you, fruit. Booyah. And don't worry, I weighed this before. I know this was the right amount. Well, turns out for me, an apple is bad. <laughs> but not like oat bran bad. It's like me in high school, a two on the hotness scale. You can see in the comparison, the oat bran went to almost 170 and then the apple brought me just to almost 150. There's potential that I might want to eat an apple after a workout or maybe after chugging a bunch of MCT oil, which I do plan on testing a bunch of weird stuff like that coming up, so stay tuned. I waited long enough I can do two tests in one day and also now I realize what you're probably thinking. Yes, I wear fitness clothes every day. Anyway, rice. Rice was a meh. Making that apple look even crappier because now you can see them on the graph on the same day together. Rice put me out of the target zone for 15 minutes and apple was like an hour. Turns out an apple a day keeps the doctor 
bothering you about your metabolic health. No, that saying is stupid because it's a saying for everyone, and somebody might eat an apple and get a tiny little rice blip like me. Taking a quick sidetrack from calibrating my own carbs to how can I hack the blood sugar response. I plan on doing a bunch of tests, crazy experiments in a future video, but I figure why not fit one in right now. There are a bunch of ways you can get your body to limit the blood sugar spike, and it's stuff like working out before eating, or walking after eating, or having a lot of fat and protein, or adding fiber, and all of those are boring. Yes, I've been messing around with all of that stuff for myself, but let's get weird. White vinegar. Supposedly, one ounce of white vinegar. Obviously, I'm using my shot glass USB. Okay. Well, basically like, you know, vodka when somebody buys around and you totally want to do it. Eating this before carbs might stop me from getting into that dangerous spike zone, so I'm having the exact same amount of rice, but this before, and we'll see how they compare. Uh, okay. For science. Mmm. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, okay, that was a lot of sounds. Weird. Oh, I'm never gonna think about Easter the same. You know what I'm talking about when you're dying eggs at Easter. Every time I smell white vinegar, it makes me think of that. Oh, that burns. Okay, rice time. Oh, thank goodness. That's way better. All right, body, start processing. Whoa, it worked. You can see it took the exact same amount of white rice from a five to a seven. So with the white vinegar, I was just barely out of my target zone at 111 for just a little bit. It's cool, but I wouldn't suggest making a habit of this. White vinegar is really acidic, and that was unpleasant. It does not seem like a sustainable lifestyle thing. But I might be having a lot of pickle appetizers in my future. This is going to be another interesting comparison. These are equal portions of the same sweet potato. This guy is going in the fridge, and this guy gets to turn into me right now. Okay, done. Got my score for that. It's interesting that it took a little longer to affect me, maybe because there's a lot of fiber. Now to test the cold potato. The idea behind this test is that whenever you heat and cool a starch, it turns into what's called a resistant starch, which makes it act more insoluble, more like fiber. So I might take even longer to digest this, and maybe there will be less of an effect. Let's find out. Well, that didn't work. It's actually a worse score, which I guess illustrates how there are a lot more things that I can't control for that have a big effect. Like maybe I was a little more stressed with the cold potatoes, or it's later in the day and that has an effect on insulin sensitivity. But anyway, that's proof that the new trend in overnight potatoes is not taking off because it's stupid. Stupid for me, but maybe somebody else it would work because again, I want to stress the idea that finding a universal perfect diet for everyone is not something you should try and find. It doesn't exist. This one's gonna be interesting because this is an equal number of carbs to all the other stuff I had. It's just a large volume. I'm tempted, but I will spare you the time lapse of eating all of these. Well, this is ridiculous. That is from vegetables. Colorful, fibrous vegetables. The same breakfast that I ate for over five years in a row would be better off having white rice in it, which is what I would prefer to have, and turns out my body would prefer it too, but I was switching to bell peppers because I was told that that was better. What I just realized, I I've not just eaten peppers by themselves, and after having them, my mouth was kind of itchy, which I think is a sign of food sensitivity, so I might actually be allergic allergic to the thing that I was eating every day. I never would have known that had I not eaten it in isolation and like watched what happened and wow, I am learning a lot in this video. I ate a lot of mangoes after my workouts, so I'm hoping this goes well. I've heard that mangoes can be better than other fruits because of the fiber, but now I'll know instead of just having heard. And also, I haven't done dishes in a while and I ran out of forks. Ah, this is awesome! Eight, fantastic. I actually stopped eating mangoes after I got such a crap score with apple. Apparently all fructose is not created equal, and I'm so glad. And look, this mango is going bad in my fridge because I thought you were a meanie head, but it turns out you're not. My metabolic score for the whole day actually went up 4% while processing one. And this is an interesting illustration of biphasic spikes. So my glucose went up, and then down, and then up, and then down again. And Levels has found that correlates to better metabolic health than just a monophasic spike. So cool. Mangoes and pasta every day forever. <laughs> Honestly, this all is so crazy. I should be eating mangoes and pasta, not oat bran and bell peppers. But that's so absolutely against the conventional wisdom that I've heard for my entire life. And now... It's all wrong, and I'm so happy about it. Jeez, I wasn't even gonna show you this one because I didn't think it'd be remarkable, but it turns out everything I discover with this is remarkable. This was beans, and that is what beans did to me. Again, this one's two spikes, but I was talking about mangoes and how they had fiber, and beans have a shit. 
ton of fiber, pun intended. And look at beans compared to mangoes. That's nutso. So it's not just fiber here. It's like my gut microbiome and my genetics and a million other things going on. Wait, I'm not done with the beans yet. Beans did not make me fart necessarily, but they made me feel like a fart. Look what happened afterward. There's a drop below where I was normally just hanging out. And that is why when you're sitting at the office after lunch, you want to go get a coffee or a nap because beans make my blood glucose go like that and then my body freaked out and dumped in a bunch of insulin and brought it down too far which is crazy and why when you say food fuels you it can also zap your energy if it's not the right stuff no more musical fruit for me wait and another thing about beans i consulted with a nutritionist if you saw my high cholesterol video and she told me to eat more beans. Turns out that is not good for me, and I just wanted to complain again about conventional wisdom, especially when it's used in a professional setting with a certified person that I paid for. So am I saying that nutritionists should no longer be a job or a thing that people do? No. But am I saying that this is better? Yes. And like, is there a way to get great results on your levels, blood glucose, but have a crap diet? Absolutely. Stay tuned for my Fit Face video where I get very drunk and keep my blood glucose just fine. And now to test a regular potato since sweet potatoes are so much better. Mm. Another shocking result because conventional wisdom is right this time. Turns out if I'm gonna have taters, they should be sweet. And actually I was worried that my results for this would be skewed because look at the night before this. Really nice and level. That's like a decent sleep, so I'm ready to deal with glucose. And then look at the night before the sweet potatoes. Eee! I did not sleep as well, and so I figured that I might do a better job with these regular potatoes today, but nope. And it's surprising to see what my body's preferences are, despite the fact that there might be some variables that I'm not controlling as well. I mean, whatever, no, you know that this channel always is perfect science. This one's gonna be an interesting illustration. This is Greek yogurt, and I have to have a ton of it, because mostly Greek yogurt is protein. This is 50 grams of protein, and then that makes up the same amount of carbs as the other stuff. Everything else has mostly been carbs and maybe some fiber by itself, but this is gonna illustrate more of a mixed meal, which has a very significant difference on the spikes that you see. If you remember my abysmal response to oat bran, I've had oat bran after having chicken and some vegetables, and my response is not that bad. So I'm interested to see what the protein does to all this for me. Also, shout out to Patreon. Anybody that's on this team, thank you so much for making this video possible. And anybody that wants to join, please do, because I can't keep being a guinea pig for you unless you get on board and help me out. Come on, you don't want to make all these stupid mistakes by yourself. <laughs> you just want to see me do it, and it's totally made possible by patrons like you. Well, this is surprising. Greek yogurt was an eight, and it's so dense, heavy. I just expected it to be way worse. It ate a lot of weight compared to the bell peppers. They're so light and not very dense, except there's way less calories. Those three bell peppers were 130. The Greek yogurt was 280 calories, which is more than double, except that my body did a way better job of processing it. Have some more vegetables? Yes, peas. So how do I think this will go? Hmm. Honestly, I give up guessing because I realize now my entire life I've just been guessing and I have had zero true insights on what I should be eating and what my body is doing. Actual insights. When I substitute peas for pasta or mangoes or even rice, I'm doing it wrong. And now that I've been putting these mind-blowing results into action, check out today, 92%. That's way better than the D's I was getting in the beginning. Now when I say I put it into action, I did like a 20% change and got an 80% difference. Actually, no, I'm doing less work now. I put a lot of self-control into eating bell peppers instead of pasta, but that was misguided. And it's so frustrating to put so much work into doing something that you think is helping when actually it should just be a different direction and probably easier. And I'm very happy that I'm finally getting the book that I truly need now, although still need to write a few more pages, so stay tuned. I mean, beer mile perhaps?